Okay, good afternoon. Good afternoon, greatness. How are you doing today? It's a pleasure having you here. Can you confirm if the audio is good to go from your end? If you can hear me loud and clear, do let me know. It is indeed a pleasure having you here. And uh, this is the beginner's workshop. And we are going to be talking about technical analysis today. Okay, awesome. You said good afternoon, sir. So with that said, I want to strongly believe that the audio is good to go from your end, right? So it's a pleasure having you here, uh, Mr. Greatness. And I believe you have been here before. You're the only one here. Uh, hopefully others join us in good time as well. Also not pleased that uh, if you have anybody that is interested in joining us, you can always send a link to them for them to attend this free session. Yes, indeed, it is a free session. So without wasting time, we're going to jump in. Uh, if you come, you're welcome. So we're going to jump into what we have for you today. Yesterday, we talked about the fundamental analysis on the market analysis. So today, it's going to be technical analysis. So on that technical analysis, it's going to be based on the charts, right? Which is going to help us with entry and exit how to enter the market and also how to exit the market. Very key, very, very important. How to enter and how to exit straight. <clears throat> Excuse me. And we believe that this has been one of the major problems for a lot of traders, entry and exit, right? So we're gonna discuss this, how to enter and how to exit the market. Highly note that this technical analysis simply has to do with information from the charts simple and it's going to help us to determine the trend is it an uptrend downtrend sideways market that's what technical analysis is going to help us to do right so as we proceed we're going to see everything and then we're going to understand much better it's all about the understanding at the end of the day so when it comes to the types of market trends that we have up down and sideways these are the only three that you can have and it comes in different variations, different formats, but it's still up, down, and sideways at the end of the day. If you look at the first diagram that we have, the first diagram is obviously an uptrend. You can see it's progressing to an upward movement. And in a, the second one is a downtrend, which is progressing to the downside. And then the third one is the sideways market, which is doing what, which is moving sideways. The sideways market is telling us that the buyers and the sellers are more or less equal, right? So let me ask this quick question for those that are here. Do you understand the little that we have talked about now with respect to the trend, where we said that the trend is sideways, meaning that the buyers and the sellers are in, uh, together, meaning that they are not leading? The buyers are not leading, sellers are not leading. Thank you, thank you. Okay, so thank you, Greatness said, yes, awesome, right? And by the time you can train your eyes to see this on the charts, you will start to understand it better and you can take advantage. But then time frame would help us to determine the type of trader that we are. Most times traders don't understand themselves. They don't know whether they are a trend trader, a counter trend trader. They don't know whether they are scalping, whether they are, uh, Day, day trading or whatever the case might be. We want to talk about the time frame, which we have from one minute all the way down to one month. Now, the good thing with the MT5, the good thing with the method of five is that the time frames that we have are even more than what you can see in front of us. You could get them in different variations as well. But basically, you have them in the one minute, five minutes, 15, 30 minutes, one hour, four hours, one day, one week, and one month. So this time frame, based on how we're looking at the market, is using the time frames. So if you're looking at the market from like the uh, lower time frames, the lower time frames would be scalping. And by the time we start to move up in time frames, you move up to intraday, to swing, and then to position trading. And that's why this diagram that we have right in front of us it's going to help us to understand that much better. If you have a look at the scalping as an example, some people call themselves scalpers, but they don't fully understand what scalping is. 
Scalping simply means that your holding time, number one, is in minutes. It's even possible for a scalper's holding time to be seconds. What does that mean? That means that you place a trade now and within a few minutes or a few seconds, you are in and out of the market. That is scalping for you. So it is very, very short term. As it is very, very short term, <clears throat> it means that you are going to be very, very active on the chart, right? And then we always advise that if you are new or you are struggling, please do not be a scalper because scalping is fast. And these are the time frames that you would find most scalpers using. I'm sure some of us that have traded, you have used this time frame and you understand what we're talking about. If you understand what we're talking about, please let us know. You have used these time frames, one minute, five minutes, and 15 minutes, and you've noticed that it has been very, very fast for you, right? And then if you've noticed that, then it means that you need to switch over to higher time frames. Switching over to higher time frames, the next one you can see in this category is 15 minutes, one hour, and then four hours. And then before you know it, you are now more or less a day trader, right? A day trader is also known as an intraday trader. You hold trades for what? For hours within that day, within the same day, right? You're holding trades for hours. You are active, right, as a day trader, but not as active as a scalper, right? And that's why we always say that you can combine trading with anything that you are doing in life. If you are doing the nine to five or you're a student, you can combine trading. But most people, when they trade, they just want to trade. And then they're looking at the market from morning till night. But that is not the way to trade. Do you think Warren Buffett watches the market from morning till night? No. Warren Buffett is more or less a position trader. A position trader is one that is rarely active, is using higher time frames of daily, weekly, or the monthly, right? And then he holds trades, holding time, he holds trades for months or for years, right? So he's a long-term trader. So we normally advise for those that are here, you are new or you are struggling, we normally advise is either you are a day trader or you are a swing trader. Position trading is going to take way too long. Scalping is too fast. The faster it is, the more dangerous it is. You could either be a day trader or a swing trader. So have this at the back of your mind that more or less you're a day trader or swing trader. And these are the time frames more or less that you'll be using from 15 minutes to the daily. And then I normally like to tell traders that you could use like one hour or the four hours for day trading or swing trading. The good thing also about these time frames is that you don't have to check the market all the time. If you're looking at the market using one hour, you can check at every hour time frame. If you're using four hours, you can check at every four hours time frame, right? Meaning every four, four hours, four, four hours interval. So trading doesn't have to be difficult, doesn't have to be too choky, right? Because most times traders want to make $1 million overnight. And that is not possible. You try to make too much money within a short period of time, you are asking for trouble, especially when you are new to the business. You need to pay your deals and take your time, right? And that's what we're trying to advise you. So let me ask you guys this question for those that are here with us. Before discussing these types of traders that we have over here, did you know who you were as a trader? Were you a scalper? Were you a day trader, a swing trader, or a position trader? Do let us know in the comment section. Did you know the type of trader that you were before? Let us know. We need some little engagements from you. Just to be sure that the audio level is good to go. And then also you are understanding. Remember, we're here to talk about technical analysis. And these are all the things under the technical analysis. Okay, so I'm just going to clean this up and then move over to the next slide. I can see only one person answered and said scalper, right? And that's from Afia Cam said scalper, okay? But the rest of us, okay, thank you. And as he said, I haven't figured out yet which one I am. Okay, great. So we like that. If you come said scalper, 
And then we always advise, as we just said now, scalping please is too fast. You might need to leave that and then cross over to either the day trading or the uh, swing trading, as we just discussed. So as is GMO, please, you could also start with the day trading or the swing trading. So you know the time frame to work with. We normally advise, <clears throat> I normally advise, based on my experience, one hour or four hours is very good, right? So are you a trend trader or a counter trend trader? What does this even mean? A trend trader is one that goes with the trend. Remember, we looked at the trend not too long ago where we said this is an uptrend. You remember, we just looked at that not too long ago. And this is an uptrend. If you are a trend trader, that means that you want to follow this trend up and then you're looking forward to buying opportunities. You want to buy on this trend. But if you are a counter trend trader, as this is an uptrend, you're looking forward to selling. So you need to understand whether you are a trend trader or you are a counter trend trader. Very key, very, very important, right? What type of trader are you? These are things that you need to write down and you need to answer, right? Am I a scalper, day, swing or position trader? Am I trading with the trend or am I trading against the trend? You need to ask this things of yourself and not be all over the place. Okay, uh, if you're concerned, okay, I do this because I do not know how to read signals much. Well, unfortunately, we're not talking about signals, right? We're not talking about signals. So please let leave signals alone. So as you mentioned, signals, leave it alone. And then scalper, remember we said this training is for either beginners, new traders, or struggling traders. And that's what we're advising. It's an advice. I always say whenever we advise you, it's for you to take it or not to take it. We are advising you, please, you either look into being a day trader or a swing trader. Leave scalping alone. And then if you decide otherwise, you can try it out yourself and see how it works for you, right? I personally have been trading for more than 10 years. I didn't listen to people at the beginning. As a matter of fact, I didn't have too many people to listen to because we didn't have too many traders out there, especially in Nigeria. So I did a lot of trial and error, wasted a lot of years, right? So we're trying to help you not to waste time, right? And as I said, this is what you should do. Write it down that this is your guideline. Day trading or swing trading, preferably be a, a trend trader with the trend. And then if you do otherwise, then, you know, the choice is yours. Right, so good. So let's continue with what we have for you. So now looking at what we have right in front of us, right? Now technical analysis, very key, very, very important. This technical analysis, right? We're gonna talk about price action and then support and resistance. Price action and then support and resistance. Guys, let us define price action quickly. Price action as the name implies, price action, you might hear people say PA, PA, which also stands for price action, is known as the direction. The direction of price, right? It's known as the direction of price and it's also known as the trend, trend of price, right? So you could say price action, what is the direction of price? What is the trend of price? And that's why if you look at price moving in this direction, what would you say? You would say that this is an uptrend. So the price action is strictly helping us to identify the direction. It's helping us to identify the trend. How is the market behaving? Is it behaving in an upward manner or is it behaving in a downward manner or in a sideways manner? That is simply price action for you. And you notice that we've already talked about that not too long ago based on the types of market trends that we have, right? So this price action Let's move over to the next slide because we actually defined it for you. So you might want to write this down. We asked, what is price action? And we said that price action is the direction, the movement of price. If you were to break it down, price, what is the price of the phone that you are using to connect to us? What is the price of the laptop or the internet device that you're using to connect to us? It's also known as what is the value? What is the rate, right? 
what is the amount and so on. That is strictly what price is. And then when we say action, action is that movement, is that activity, right? Is the behavior, right? And that's why in the movie industry, the movie industry, when you hear them do three, two, one action, what happens? You see some people start to move in a particular way, in a particular way, in a scripted way. So if you think about it very well, you might be asking yourself, the price movement that we see in a chart or in any chart, is it moving in a particular way? The answer is yes, it is indeed moving in a particular way. But it's because a lot of traders do not understand it. They do not understand the language of the chart. They feel that it is moving in a rubbish, chaotic way. But truth be told, it's actually moving in a scripted particular way. It's until you can see it properly, you can read and understand the market properly, that you can take advantage of it. Now, this price action, by the way, they happen to be based on those candles. When you see the candles, the candlestick patterns that you have on the chart, we're gonna look at the chart shortly. Those candlestick patterns, there are some specific candlesticks that will tell you, oh, it is time to buy, oh, it is time to sell. So this specific candlestick that we have, as you can see in front of us, you have a handful of them from the bullish engulfing to the bearish engulfing, right? To the hammer, to the doji. Then you have spinning tops. You have different categories of candles, right? You can see these ones that we have over here, they're 10 in number. If you look very well from the bullish engulfing, bearish engulfing, harami and so on, they all have the direction, the direction, because you remember we said price action has to do with the direction. They all have the direction that they are pointing to, leading to at the end of the day. And that's why if you look at these four category, these are the four main candlestick patterns that you should be looking out for. So these four categories, you can do a screenshot if you want. I don't know whether you can quickly draw it and do the markings and the arrows, because the first one, the bearish pin, the bearish pin is known as the bearish pin bar. Does it look like a pin? Look at it very well. Yes, it looks like a pin. This pin is also called a hammer. So you might hear some people say the bearish hammer. So it looks like a pin, it looks like a hammer, but this bearish pin bar is pointing to the downside. Bearish means selling. So that means that when you have this bearish pin, it is time to sell. When you have the bullish pin, it is time to buy. Bullish engulfing, time to buy. Bearish engulfing, time to sell. Please take note of this candlestick patterns because this is what you're gonna be using as your entry trigger. I repeat, this is what you're gonna be using to enter the market. You remember we said at the very beginning that technical analysis has to do with the entry and the exit. Entry and the exit based on the charts, right? Good. So now support and resistance. For this support and resistance, you are the ones that would help us to explain this. We always try to help everybody to understand the market better. And then we always say also that you have this information in you. So we are going to be looking at this support and resistance with respect to supply and demand, right? Supply and demand. So who can help us out quickly? Who can tell us what happens when demand is greater than supply? Something is going to happen to price because everything we're talking about is price. What is the price of crude oil? What is the price of gold? What is the price of Euro USD? What is the price of Tesla? Everything is the price. So you must understand the price. Price, they say, is king. Demand greater than supply. What's going to happen to price? Who can help us? Is the price going to go up or is the price going to go down? Now, this is the time that we need you to be engaging. And if you don't engage, it's not a problem. We'll continue to dish out the information, finish in good time, and then call it a day. After all, this is a free session, but we need you to help yourself out. And the only thing you need to do is to join us. Thank you. Greatness said the price will rise. And then Basi Ayo said, hi. I believe your high means up and your rise too means up. So the direction that you guys are talking about when demand is greater than supply, according to you, 
to those that answered, when demand is greater than supply, he said the price is going to go up. Can somebody give us a real life scenario, a real life example that we can relate to when you say demand is greater than supply? <clears throat> Think about it. Maybe it's something um, that has to do at your workplace or it's something that ha ha has to do with us generally in Nigeria or anywhere in the world. Let us know. You give us an example that will help the person that maybe did not answer or that is not really sure that doesn't understand what we're talking about to understand all of these things better. Can anybody give us an example? You said that demand greater than supply, the price is going to go up, it's going to rise, it's going to increase, it's going to, whatever English you are using, the direction is up. Anybody, any example from anybody here? Thank you. And you can see Basi Ayo said, shortage of fuel. Shortage of fuel simply means fuel scarcity. Do we agree with Basi Ayo? You can see that we're not the ones giving you, you are the ones giving us, and we're gonna look at it together. As Jima said, for example, when you have few goods to sell and you have more people demanding for the goods, you tend to increase the price. You can see what as Jima said now, you can easily, easily relate that to shortage of fuel, shortage of fuel, right? So when the fuel is in, you know, the supply is low, it's short, right? They're not circulating it. According to what Azijimo said in his explanation, he said, more people will demand for it, exactly. And then the price will go up naturally. Thank you for that. Let me give you one or two more examples, right? Let me try to think of maybe one or two more examples with respect to uh, what we're talking about. Uh, because if we're to summarize demand greater than supply, we would easily say what? We would easily say, um, I want to use a particular word, um, demand greater than supply. That is like shortage. You can use the word shortage as an example. Shortage, when we have shortage of something, then it means what? Then it means that the price is going to go up. So demand greater than supply is equals to shortage, right? So other examples could be, if you guys remember, there was a period where tomato was not really um um available when the not i think they blocked it or something some years ago so tomatoes that time was very expensive because we didn't have too much of it so because the shortage was what we we're experiencing the price went up hmm, interesting so that means that supply greater than demand i want to believe you will say it is the opposite and then you will say that the price will be going down so give us an example supply greater than demand when supply is greater than demand then we can easily say what we can easily say surplus because we have plenty so when there's plenty of anything using the explanation of as this gmo he said for example when you have few goods that is for demand but in this instance for example when we have plenty plenty goods interesting i like it because it is in the opposite direction and that's what's going to help us to understand our charts much better so can anybody give us an example and if you cannot think of an example then of course i would have to help you out but we want you to always try give it an example give it a shot anybody aziz basi greatness if you come anybody here any example are you looking at the ceiling? Is the answer there? I don't know. Come back to us. Is your barrel in your mouth? Are you tapping the table? Are you thinking about it? Hmm, interesting. No answer yet. No problem. Let me help you out. The same instance that we mentioned, tomato, when is the season for tomatoes? When is the season for corn? Something that is seasonal. When is the season? It's going to be plenty. There's going to be surplus of it. And because of that, the price is going to go down. You hear them saying, uh, buy one, get one free. They're trying to sell out very fast. Example, when we had the likes of um, um, telecoms, there's just telecoms. How much is SIM card today? SIM card today is more or less free or it is 100 naira or whatever the case might be. Why is that so? Because 
the SIM card is in surplus. The SIM, SIM card is plenty, right? So because it is plenty, that SIM card, the price now is 100 Naira or more or less zero. But what happened when we had just one telecom provider? When we had one telecom provider, what happened back then to the price of the SIM card? Because that time, it was shortage. So that time, there was heavy demand for SIM card. At the beginning, SIM card was about 50,000 Naira when we had only one provider. Then we had more providers come in and then the price starts to drop and drop. And you can see, as Jimo said, the seller tends to lower the price. Lower the price, yes, exactly. Maybe in a giveaway price, just to sell the goods since there are few buyers demanding for it. Exactly. You have plenty of sellers, just like in the marketplace, you have plenty of sellers selling the same thing. For them to sell, they have to lower their prices. And these are things that we're talking about. These are things that we need to fully understand. You do not understand. Trust me, you will not be able to read. You will not be able to understand. You will not be able to take advantage of the market. What we're talking about, we want to believe that it is making sense to us so far. Because we are going to continue to explain this support and resistance using demand and supply. From what we have just mentioned now, look at it. This is what we have been talking about. So we would like you to write this down or you can do a screenshot. Either one. Support is where demand is greater than supply. And demand greater than supply is where we have shortage. In one word, shortage. And because we have shortage, the price is going to go up. It's going to go high. It's going to go up, rise. And that is where we have more or less more buyers than sellers, petrol scarcity. Somebody mentioned shortage of petrol earlier. When we have petrol scarcity, don't we have plenty people, plenty buyers, and then we don't have enough sellers? That's it. And then resistance is where supply is greater than demand. So we need to understand these things. If you understand these things, then we're going to relate it now <clears throat> to the charts. If you understand this, we're going to relate it to the charts. Because if you look at the chart that we have right in front of us, well, this is not the chart, but technically it is the chart because the chart has to do with the price action, the price movement. So if you look at what we have right in front of us, this is how the price moves, price direction, price trend from the support. This is the support over here, put S here, you can see support, and here is the resistance. So the support is where the buyers, the buyers, right, take the price up to the resistance. And then the resistance is where the sellers take the price down to the support. The buyers take it up, the sellers take it down, the buyers take it up, the sellers take it down, the buyers take it up, the sellers take it down. So you can see the relationship between the support and resistance, right? And then you can also see that price seems to be bouncing. It's bouncing from the support and the resistance. Hmm, interesting. Now, if you are paying attention and you're understanding this, it's going to help you even more. Because if you look at this market that we have right in front of us, you'll notice that the market is sideways. Remember we said we have uptrend, downtrend, and then sideways markets. This is clearly a sideways market because it keeps on bouncing, right? But it is not going to bounce forever. We have instances of it going up and then going down. It can easily go up back to the resistance and then we have a breakout. We then have a breakout in the market at the end of the day. So the market could either break out to the upside or break out to the downside. Now, if it breaks out to the upside, that means that here there was resistance, it has now broken here, and then the other side will now turn to support. Hmm, interesting. Now, when the other side turns to support, it is now a case of you want to buy because you are seeing the strength of the buyers to the upside. And as you want to buy, you are going to simply wait for price to get here, meaning that you wait for price to come back and then you enter and then it takes you higher. And then vice versa as well. When the price breaks the support here, the other side turns to resistance, right? And then you want to sell because you are seeing this breakout to the downside showing that the sellers are more dominant. So you are looking forward to selling and then you want to sell at the resistance. In a nutshell, 
Guys, take note of this. When you want to buy, you can write this down as a summary. When you want to buy, you should be looking forward to buying at the area of what? At the area of support, all right? Write this down, it's gonna help you out. When you want to buy, you should be looking forward to buying at the area of support. And when you want to sell, when you want to sell, look for the area of what? Look for the area of resistance. You can see 10 trade, we are helping you to summarize the business, right? Which is something I can tell you for a fact, you will not get in most places. At 10 trade, we're helping you drastically to summarize. And that's why we don't want to waste much of your time. We want you to hit the ground running. It's not about the class, but rather it's about what you do after the class, which is practicing, right? So from what we have just done over here, if you look at the next slide, right, you'll notice something. You notice that what we're talking about, this is it. Price breaks out to the upside. You now wait for price to come down here to the support. So this is now a new support. And then this is the new resistance. And then you get your entry here as support. And then it goes up, goes up, gets the resistance and then breaks it. Once it breaks it, this other side turns to support. And then the moment the price starts to go down, this here will turn to resistance. This top part turns to resistance. By the time it gets to support, where you want to buy, you can see that the trend is gradually going higher and higher. You want to buy here at the support, it goes to the resistance, breaks the resistance, and then here turns to support, and then you wait for price to come back here, picks you up, here is what, here is resistance. If you look at what we're drawing, you can see that the price is progressing higher and higher and higher, and it's progressing higher and higher. It is saying and telling us that the buyers are in control but then we were able to identify this right from the very beginning, right? And then before you know, this uptrend, before you know, when you look at your chart, it looks similar to this, right? A full-blown uptrend, right? So it looks like a full-blown uptrend. As it looks like a full-blown uptrend, what does this now mean? It simply means that the buyers have now taken charge, taking control. But if you were able to identify this as much earlier, right, you'd have noticed that, oh, this would have been a good place to buy because this was resistance and then the price broke out and then came out to test it and then pushed higher. You'll be noticing that price is testing all those previous areas that have been broken, right, if you notice very well. And then this one price is presently on this graph on this um, image is presently at the area that was broken this resistance was broken here is not support you're expecting it to even push higher the more but the good thing now is that from the understanding that you have gotten today it is now going to help you to look at the markets differently and then to take advantage yes take advantage we want to do something for you now right we want to do something for you now but we want to ask this quick question do you have a good understanding of what we've talked about? It might not be 100%. Of course, nothing is 100%. Or if you have a good enough understanding, then it is a start. It is something that you can work on because trust me, this is something that is simple and straightforward. All you have to do is to practice. The truth now about life is that nothing is difficult. It's all about practicing that thing. You don't have to fly a plane. It doesn't mean you cannot know how to fly a plane tomorrow. Are we together? You cannot also do astronaut. You can do it. It's all about practicing, right? And that's why we have the simulation. We have our demo account. And we always advise, you need to have a demo account. If you are listening to me now, as they say in church, under the sound of my voice, this is it. If you have not been practicing, what we have been talking about right from Monday, how to use the software, the method of the five to open, close, and modify trades. Yesterday, fundamentals, if you have not been practicing any of these things, right? Well, you are not doing yourself justice. Because what we're talking about today, if you do not practice it, there is no way it will stick. And it's all about practicing at the end of the day. And then before you notice, when you cross over to the real chart, let's cross over to the real charts now. When you cross over to the real charts, you start to understand the market much, much better. And as you understand the market much, much better, it is now something that you can take advantage. Yes, you can take advantage of it. 
Hmm. Look at this market that we have in front of us, right? I'm going to show you something. We're going to follow the pattern. It's all about pattern. Remember pattern movement? You can see from here, the market went down, came up. You can see we're following the pattern. You can see the structure, the pattern of price, what the price is doing. If you look at what I'm doing uh, closely, you can see what is happening. So if you look at what's happening over here, you should now have this idea, this understanding that from here, this area, we can easily call this the area of resistance. I can draw a line. It could be a line or a box where you can, you know, pick your area because it's an area and not a price point. So you can call this like the area of resistance. And you can see from here is where it went up. So this area is the area of support. You can also draw this here. And you always start from the left-hand side to the right-hand side. You can see what we've also done over here. Can you see? Beautiful. Now look at this now. Let's even remove this uh, pattern so it doesn't confuse us a bit. And over here, we have something here on top as well, right? It doesn't have to be 100%, but as long as you have the understanding, oops, sorry, clicked on something. As long as you have the understanding of what and where it is, then you will know how to draw it properly. You can see we're drawing this area here that is showing the area of resistance, right? Showing the area of resistance over here, so it's resistance. Here towards resistance. And if you look very well, here was support. You can see a bunch of support areas here. Support, support, support. Now let me show you guys something. Something that people might not see because the chart might be looking chaotic to them. When the market broke out of here, this place over here, when it broke out to the downside, automatically this here has now turned to resistance. As it turned to resistance, look at what happened. After a while, Price did what? Price came back here. And even came back here again, two times. It came back here and look at what happened. It kept on going down. So remember we said support and resistance is going to help us with the entry, where to enter the market. We want to show you something quickly now because this is just one. You have just this one here. Then we have other ones that we have already done, right? I can show you this one that we have done already. But we want to show you something very powerful now want to combine fundamentals and technicals together. These are other charts that you can look at and then you can see the reaction. Look at this, this was former resistance here. It came back here, you can see it acted as support and then pushed higher. So whenever you draw your markets, when you put your markets on the chart, you would always notice something that price nicely is reacting to them. It's reacting to them because these are areas where you have buyers and sellers. Once you can identify them, you can take advantage of them. Now, I want to give you an example of how to combine the fundamentals and the technicals together. Repeat how to combine the fundamentals and the technicals together. So I'm going to help you guys out. For the fundamentals, you always start with the fundamentals. It's advisable when you are trading as a trader, start with the fundamentals. I want to use this particular example. This is an example I like. We're going to use it based on the walk up. Walk up. And this walk up we're talking about is walk up that occurred in 2018 and not last year. Why not last year? Because one that occurred last year happened in Qatar and the currency is not listed here. But the one for 2018 occurred in Russia and the currency is listed here. The currency is known as RUB, known as the Russian ruble right rub for short but known as the russian ruble so for this russian ruble let me ask this question and then you guys will see what we're talking about and then it should build that much confidence in everybody for the russian ruble what do you think people were doing to it during the walk up when the walk up started were people buying the currency or were they selling the currency think about it remember that we are starting with the fundamentals and we talked about fundamentals yesterday so if you were here yesterday or you watched the recordings, you should have a good enough understanding. It should help you to understand all of this much better. Remember also the recordings are going to the uh, recordings are going to be posted on the YouTube channel after the class. Thank you. If I come said buying and Bassi said buying as well. Yes, indeed. You are going to be buying the RUB. Can anybody tell us why? As this Jimo said, I wasn't here yesterday but I think they will be buying. Okay, as this GMO, I like the fact that you said you think. Tell us why you think. Because we always say, 
Whether you were here or you were not here, it is straightforward. It is something that you already know the information. But Tentrade, we are helping you to apply, apply the information the proper way. So is as this GMO really I want to hear from? Why did you say you think that they will be buying the REB? What is your understanding? If you would answer, first of all, I would really, really appreciate it. Even if you miss it, no problem. We would help you. But we want to prove to you that this business is not difficult. It doesn't have to be difficult. Can you try? In the next five seconds, please try and type something out. Okay, and then you said, listen to this, guys, and tell us whether you agree with him. He said, as more people entering the country, they can't spend their currency in row. Exactly. That is it. You hit the nail on the head. So they tend to buy Russian ruble. Exactly. But see, I said more visitors came in. This is something that we witnessed during Qatar. We were not talking about the one, that one because the currency is not listed here. So in Russia, 2018, people went there from US, from Nigeria, from Ghana. If you traveled, did anybody go for Russia and go to the World Cup in Russia or Qatar? I'm sure the answer is no. But you might be planning on going to the next World Cup 2026, you know, if everything goes according to plan. If the money you make from this business, of course, within the next three years, you make good money, you can travel for the World Cup, go on holiday, you're your own boss. So basically, you are going to be buying the RUB, right? So what is that number one currency? What is that number one currency that you will be carrying to Russia? Because you cannot carry Naira there. I would together. You cannot carry the Naira there. Who is going to buy Naira from you in Russia? What is that currency number one that people will be carrying to Russia? Everybody from all over the world. Number one. Who has an idea? Thank you. As this Gmo that was not here yesterday, he said, USD. Thank you. Great. They said you, you can, we, uh, we want to believe your understanding. It's not difficult. So we're carrying USD and then we're going to be selling the USD. So when we have a currency pair such as USD RUB, if you remember from our pairing, the pairing that we did yesterday, we said for USD RUB, because we're going to be buying RUB and selling USD, it means that we're going to be clicking on sell. Clicking on sell. That means that during the World Cup, we're expecting it to be a downtrend, right? During the World Cup, we're expecting it to be a downtrend. So we're going to do something now. We're going to cross over. We have something saved for us. And we're going to see based on what we have talked about now, because this is the fundamentals. And the fundamentals should show on the chart. The chart is technicals. So this is the fundamentals here. If you look at this um, image that we have in front of us, you see that the start of the World Cup, you can see, and this is for one month, by the way, the start for the World Cup is over here. This is the start of the World Cup. And then the end of the World Cup is over here. So from the start to the end, you can see from the start to the end, is going downwards. As it's going downwards, what is that? It's showing that people were selling away together. But you must combine this with the technicals. Why? At the start of the World Cup over here, if you are clicked on sell, expecting it to go down, right? What happened? The market actually went up. So that means that you'd have lost a lot of money. You would have even crashed your account if you were trading in this way. Because if you trace it, you can see how the market was moving from the tracing that we're doing over here. And from this tracing, it will help you to understand better how the market behaved. So why did the market behave this way? It is the market. It is for us to take advantage. For us to take advantage, what do we want to do? We want to sell. Where do we want to sell? Let me ask you guys this quick question because we're going to run up within the next maybe like 10 minutes thereabouts. After this example, you have any question, we look at questions and then we call it today. Who can help us? Where do you want to sell? We gave you the summary, the breakdown not too long ago. So where do you want to sell? We're going to wait for your reply. Who can help us out? Where do you want to sell? Where are you supposed to sell? Anybody, somebody, everybody? Our answers need to come in fast. I don't want to believe there's a delay. Beautiful. You want to sell where? You want to sell at the resistance. I'm sure you wrote this down. 
if you did not write it down, when we're writing it down at the bottom here, and then we're saying buy support, sell resistance, well, that's up to you, right? Because there's nothing we can do about that. We told you to write it down. You can as well watch this recording and then write it down again. So here, you can see from here, from this point we're drawing, from here, the market went up. So this is an area of support. So I'll just draw it across the chart. This is an area of support. Here, the market went down. So this is an area of what? It's an area of resistance. You can see we have the price going up, then down. You can see it's bouncing within the support and resistance. And then over here, it broke out. As it broke out, we have here as what? Here as support. As you can see here, was where the price went up. And you remember that you want to what? You want to sell. So the market went up, came down, went up again, but it did not get to this point here where you'd have loved to have what? Where you have loved to have sold. It got to this point, close to it, and then turned around, got to the support, broke it, right? So this here will now turn to resistance. Now look at what happened. The market now came to this point here, and then this was where it sold and went down. Look at this candle. If you look at those price action candles that we talked about, where we looked at the likes of the pin, doesn't this look like a pin, like a hammer? So this would have been the candle that you'd have used to enter on a cell to take it back down to this point. So you can see you are not rushing. You are combining the fundamentals and technicals together. And as you combine them, it starts to make sense. As it starts to make sense, you can make money. It's only when it makes sense that you can make money that you understand. If you are making money, you don't understand, then it is gambling. Now look at what happened here. It went back to the same resistance and you would have sold here again and the market went, got to the support, broke it and ended over here, right? So this was the end. This was where you'd have made your final money. So we need to understand this. Look at this very well. Look at this chart. This is explaining the happenings based on fundamentals and technicals. And we always say most times people do not understand charts because they don't know how to read and understand it, right? So they can't take advantage. Now I'm going to ask a follow-up question. Now the walk-up has ended here. We're rounding up within the next few minutes, guys. I need your attention. Now that the walk-up has ended here, what are you going to be doing to the RUB? Anybody? What would you be doing to the RUB who can help us out? Because trust me, when we do this, it's just going to seal everything. You're going to understand this and then it just remains for you to practice. You can see, I'm not telling you what's going to happen. You're the one telling us, as is Jimo that was not here yesterday, he said sell REB. He came up with the first answer because I want to believe your thought processes. I'll sell it because I don't need it anymore. I'm going back to my country. Everybody, they're all going back to their fatherland, right? As they're going back to their fatherland, what happens? You sell it. So you are doing what? You are selling the RUB, right? So what would you be doing to a currency pair, currency pair such as USD RUB? USD RUB. What would you be doing to USD RUB? Are you going to be clicking on sell or clicking on buy? Think about it very well. Uh, as this Jimo might not know this because he was not here yesterday, so the pairing, he might not understand. Or he can as well watch the recording from yesterday and it should help him to understand. Uh, greatness said buy. Okay, you said buy. And because you said buy at the end of the walk up, it means that you're expecting it to go up because buy is up. Am I correct? Buy is up. We're going to see whether it went up or not. Excuse me. <clears throat> I'm going to first of all clean up this chart. It's looking very messy. Right. And we're going to cross over to the next one here. And you can see beautiful. Look at what we have over here. You remember, this was the end of the walk up and then look at what happened after it went up, right? From the end of the walk up, it went up. So that means that truly, truly, you're going to be clicking on buy USD RUB. Beautiful. Guys, you need to understand this. Understand number one, practice number two. Some understand they don't practice, right? But when you practice what you understand, it makes that knowledge. Do you know what that knowledge turns into? The application of information is what? Who can help us? We're rounding up now, by the way. If you guys have any questions, feel free to ask your question. What is the application of that 
information. Who can help us? Because I can tell you for, for a fact, okay, as the Jimo said, by is true, just that the pairing is confusing. The pairing, that's why I said you were not here yesterday. So the pairing might be confusing. I said it before you typed this, right? So as is Jimo, please go over to the YouTube channel. I'm going to drop the link for the YouTube channel now, right? So when you go over to the YouTube channel, all you have to do is to subscribe, right? Subscribe to the YouTube channel and then watch the recording from yesterday. Simple. So here's the link for the YouTube. That's the YouTube channel. So do well to go and watch yesterday's class where we talked about fundamentals. You see the dates over there and so on. Watch it. It's fundamentals. It will help you to understand its fundamentals better. But I like the fact that you joined us yes, joined us today. You were not here yesterday. And you are understanding. What does that mean? That means that this business is not necessarily hard. It's not difficult. It's we that make the simple difficult. And that's the truth. Right? So if you have any question, feel free to ask before we call it a day now, because we want you to practice. You must go and practice. And then when we meet up tomorrow, you can ask questions, maybe based on your practicals. People don't practice. That's one thing that I have noticed. And then I'm trying to change the, the, the mode of the training where we do quick training. We don't waste our time. Like we're rounding up right now. And as we round up right now, Go and practice. Yeah, please ask your question, please. Greatness. So go and practice. If you don't practice, then it's up to you. There's nothing that we can do. The best thing that Tentra can do is to give you the knowledge because that application is what we call wisdom. And people are not applying. Unfortunately, they are not applying wisdom to this business. Wisdom is that application of the information or the knowledge that you already have. Simple. You don't apply it. There's no wisdom there. Please, guys, ask your question. We're rounding up right now, right? It has been a good day, if you ask me, right? We have impacted knowledge. We have given you the knowledge. And, of course, we believe that it's good for you guys. Okay, Green, I said yesterday you said we would know how to calculate the stop loss and take profit from today. Okay, thank you for that. Let me show you that quickly. I'm going to cross over to the charts now because everything is on the charts. It's even on the candles that we talked about. So let me just show you that now on the chat and I will show you within five seconds, right? And I'm showing you this particular one because this is one that I am eyeing. You look very well, the trend is down, right? This trend is down. This is Bitcoin, by the way, Bitcoin daily time frame. Here it was what? Support. Here is resistance. Here is resistance. Can you see? Here too is resistance. But here that is resistance. Look very well. Here that's resistance. Can you see this candle? Who knows the candle? Who can tell us? This is the example we're going to use to answer that question. Easy, straightforward. Because I thought you'd have been able to get this, but who knows this candle? We talked about the candle today. You can check your screenshots, or maybe you drew it, or let me help you out. Okay, you can see, as this Jimmo said, hammer. Thank you. It's a hammer, also known as a pin. And it is a bearish one, as you can see. So that means that we're supposed to sell. So if you sell from here, if you enter here, maybe at the lows of this candle, your stop loss will be here, just above that candle, right? So as your stop loss is here, it has a price, right? Stop loss has a price. Your entry has a price. Your take profit, let's assume this is your final take profit here. Your final take profit has a price as well. So if you want to know how many pips in stop loss, I'll put here for SL for stop loss and here for TP. TP for take profit over here, right? So for stop loss, it's going to be the difference between the entry and the stop loss, right? Entry and stop loss to give you the amount in pips. Do you understand that now? Greatness, everybody, how to identify your stop loss and take profit in pips. The difference between your entry price. Let's assume the entry price here, I'll just do 100. Let's assume the entry price here is 100. And then the stop loss price is 120. That means that the difference between the two of them is 20. So your stop loss will be 20 pips. Let's assume the take profit here is 30. So that means that the difference between the entry, 100, and take profit, 30, is 70. So your take profit is going to be 70 pips. That's it. Okay, and greatness said yes, sir. Can you see that we explained that within a short time, one minute? So the explanation is good, but the practicals is even better. And the practicals is on you. Hmm. 
have you gotten value from today? Some people have been signing in and out. Probably your internet has been a bit shaky. You can watch the recording. Well, have you gotten value from today? If you have, then we have done our job. It is now for you to do your job and go and practice. Practice these things. How to determine the stop cost and take profit based on your charts on the candle that you're using to enter. Tomorrow when we meet up, then you can ask your questions. But you need to practice. If you don't practice, you may not have questions to ask. Have you guys gotten value from today? Because we're running up right now. Okay, if you can say please, as we have opened the MT5 demo, do we use the moving average? Have we talked about moving average? No, we are not talking about moving average. We do not use moving average. There are a million and one ways to trade, but we do not discuss moving average. We cannot discuss all the ways there. If you mention moving average, somebody might mention, oh, what about uh, MACD, RSI? Somebody might mention, oh, what about Bollinger Bands? We can't talk about everything. So let's stick to the class, please. Thank you. If you come, hope you understand. We didn't mention moving average, so we are not focusing on moving average. We're focusing on price action, support, and resistance. That's all. Okay? You don't use moving average. Hope you guys understand. So on behalf of 10 trade, we want to say thank you, thank you, thank you to everybody. You said okay, but but don't what don't you understand? We said don't use moving average. We are not teaching you moving average. So what don't you understand? Let us know before we round up now because of time. So what don't you understand? Uh, if you come. I'm going to wait for your reply. I'm going to wait for your reply. Okay. No reply from you. Then we're going to have to round up because of time. Okay. You say, okay, I get you. We only use, exactly. Thank you. A million and one ways to trade. We cannot show you a million and one. We can only show you one that is powerful. And this one is powerful. You can do your research on price action support and resistance. I have been using this personally for years. Trust me, it is that good. All right? It is only with time that you would also see as well. And the time is what we're trying to help you to reduce. You want to increase your time, you can go and try moving average, try Bollinger Bands. You'll notice for months, for years, you are more or less going round and round until you settle for the one that we have given you. Okay, no problem. Thank you guys. It has indeed been a good one. We're calling it a day from here. And we'll see you same time tomorrow. So please, from my phone, I do not know how to draw the column. From your phone, click on your phone. I can't show you the phone. I'm just using my knowledge. And play around with your devices. Click the inside. If you see a circular um, you know, pie or whatever that comes up, look for the um, three diagrams. I think you see triangle circle and square click on that then to show you the horizontal line that you can drop on your charts play around with your devices whether it is android or it is um uh, uh apple click inside you see that round stuff and then as inside the charts area where you have the chat the, um candles area click inside and play around with it you still have issues then tomorrow we help you out okay Thank you guys. Let me stop the recording now so it's not too lengthy.